Hello everyone, my name is Wildcat Funescu, and if your goal is to become more productive with Microsoft Copilot, you're at the right spot. By now, you have probably already seen the Super Bowl commercial that Microsoft did to inspire us on how artificial intelligence can change our lives. And it was truly a beautiful ad that showed that artificial intelligence is not only for IT professionals. Artificial intelligence is not only for developers or people that work with computers every single day. Artificial intelligence is here, whatever your job may be, whatever your goals might be, AI and Microsoft Copilot is here to help you become more productive. And as I'm doing this video, I really wanted to emphasize that you do not need to be an IT professional or a prompt engineer as people call them now to use Microsoft Copilot. Microsoft Copilot is very easy to use. Microsoft Copilot is natural to use. However, there are a few tips and tricks that you need to know about in order to get the best experience possible, especially if Microsoft Copilot is the first artificial intelligence tool that you will interact with regularly. So let's get started. Let's start with tip number one, make sure that you are signed in when using Copilot. You can access Microsoft Copilot without signing in at all. However, you might reach some limitations pretty fast. Now, what many people do not know is that technically there are four different ways of being signed in with Microsoft Copilot, each one of them, and even two different subscriptions that will give you different capabilities. The first one is Copilot Free, which requires no sign-in at all. You can open up an incognito or an in-private tab today. You can go to copilot.microsoft.com and you can start using Copilot. You do not need to sign in. The other option is Copilot still free, but sign in with your Microsoft account. So think at your Outlook account. Think at your uh, Microsoft account that you used to connect on Xbox with. Sign in with any Microsoft account and you will unlock so many features. We'll talk about them in just a few seconds. You also have some premium subscriptions such as Microsoft Copilot Pro, which is the premium Copilot subscription for individuals. And we also have Microsoft Copilot with commercial data protection for enterprises. Now, I want to focus on the free experience with Microsoft Copilot and why I think you should be signed in when you use it. When you use Copilot and you are not signed in, you are actually limited at five prompts daily. Now, what is a prompt? We'll dive deeper in it in just a few seconds, but uh, think of a prompt as an interaction with your artificial intelligence tool, in this case, Microsoft Copilot. If you use Copilot and you are signed in with a Microsoft account, you have unlimited conversations daily, so that's already awesome. Without being signed in, you have a limit of five prompts per conversation with a Microsoft account, you can go up to 30 prompts per conversation. So you can keep that conversation on the same subject going and Copilot will keep that history when you interact with it and be able to further improve the result you're looking for. Without being signed in, there are no personalization to your Copilot experience. Every time you go, there is no history saved, of course, as you're not signed in, your conversations, are not saved at all, so you always start from a blank slate. Now, AI will be pretty good at adapting the answer it gives you depending on the prompt, but still, if you allow personalization, which is available with a Microsoft account, it will get to know you, so after a while, it will be able to offer you better results. Now, don't get me wrong, 
Some of you might not be a fan of having your conversation saved in Microsoft Copilot, and that's okay, you can turn it off. If you are not signed in with Microsoft Copilot, you cannot create images, but if you sign in with a Microsoft account, you can, and without the Microsoft account, you cannot add plugins, which you can do with a Microsoft account. And again, I'm talking absolutely free here. It costs absolutely nothing to create a new Outlook.com email address and a Microsoft account. You can do that in three minutes and unlock so many more features in Microsoft Copilot. Since a lot of you watching my YouTube channel come from the business environment, I also wanted to talk a bit about Copilot with commercial data protection. What does commercial data protection actually mean? First of all, the data will not leak outside of the organization and your user data will not be commingled with web data. With Copilot with commercial data protection, the conversations are not saved and Copilot will not use any of the information you give it to train the AI model. Now, when we interact with Copilot and we use a free version of Copilot, either not signed in or signed in with a Microsoft account, let's say that I'm writing an amazing book on PowerShell and uh, I have a really great way to explain a few things. Uh, I'm really good at that. I, I want to use Copilot to spell check. I'll put my explanation of PowerShell inside Copilot, uh, ask it to spell check, Copilot will spell check it for me. But if I'm on a free account, Copilot, the AI model behind might say, you know what? This is actually a great way to explain PowerShell. I haven't seen that before. And next time that somebody else asks it to explain PowerShell, it might use the explanation I gave it because when we use the free version of Copilot, it will use the data we give it. It will use all the activities to train the AI model behind. Now, of course, we do not want that with our company data. If you work on a recipe or if you work on an itinerary to travel in Montreal, it doesn't matter, but you don't want your employees to put sensible company data, which is your most precious asset, it's your IP. You don't want them to put that into a consumer tool and use that data to train the AI model for everyone. So this is where Copilot with commercial data protection comes in. It will not save any of the data behind. It will remain within your organization. It will not be shared on the web. Uh, conversations will not be saved and the info will not be used to train the AI model. This is on by default and it's included with Microsoft 365, E3 and E5 subscriptions, as well as business premium and business standard subscriptions. If you do not have those subscriptions, so let's say you have only an Office 365, E3, E5, there will be a standalone subscription that will be available in the future for $5 per user per month. If you are logged in with an eligible Entro ID account. So uh, let me go in and show you how it looks. So first profile here, you can see that I am logged in and you can see it over here with my personal account. It says Vlad here at the top. You see I have recent activity and plugins on my uh, personal Microsoft account, uh, but that's it. Now I go to my work account here where I'm logged in with my a work email address. You see I have my company logo here at the left and I see a big protected at the top right of the chat. So I see protected over here, I see protected right above when I interact with Copilot, I see your personal and company data are protected in this chat. So if you're in Copilot with commercial data protection, you have this additional protection, but still, if you use Copilot Personal, make sure that you are signed in with a Microsoft account to unlock all the functionality. So that was it for tip number one. Now let's switch over to tip number two, which is to use good prompts. Now I mentioned the word prompt a few times already, uh, but what does it mean? So when we interact with Copilot, 
we use a prompt. Every single thing that you tell Copilot to do is a prompt. So prompts are simply how you ask Copilot to do something for you. It can be answer a question, create an image, create a blog post, write some code. All of that is a prompt. Now, prompts are not unique to Microsoft Copilot. Prompts is something that is used in all the artificial intelligence tools, or more specifically, in all the uh, Gen AI, generative AI tools, such as ChatGPT, Genesis by Google, and Microsoft Copilot. Now, prompts can be very simple. A prompt can be as simple as write a blog post about sustainable practices in agriculture. But a prompt can be very detailed. So for example, craft a 1500 word blog post for a general audience interested in sustainability, focusing on the significance and benefits of sustainable agricultural practices like organic farming and agroforestry. Include real world examples, innovative technologies, and insights from reputable sources. Conclude with a reflection on the importance of those practices and the call for collective efforts to embrace them. Wow, this is quite the prompt. Look at how many details we are giving Copilot. And of course, the more details that we give Copilot, the better result we will get. Now, I really want to emphasize, you do not need to be a prompt engineer to use Microsoft Copilot. However, Knowing the best practices and knowing a bit how Copilot thinks can really help you get the expected results faster. So to get better at prompting, I want to talk to you about what are the Microsoft prompt ingredients. So let's take a look at an example prompt. So I have a prompt here which says, generate an, a thousand word blog post about artificial intelligence and its impact on marketing. The target audience is SEO experts that want to update their skills. Focus on getting information from scholarity articles and use as many concrete and real life examples as possible. Now, this is a good prompt, right? Because it includes the four ingredients that Microsoft recommends. The first ingredient is the goal, which you can see here in purple. So what response do you want from Copilot? Here it's clear. I want an, a thousand word blog post about artificial intelligence and its impact on marketing. So we're clear on the goal. Then we have the context. Why do you need it and who is involved? So why do I need it? Who's involved? What's my target audience? My target audience is SEO experts that want to update their skills. So that already tells Copilot, okay, this is the audience I'm building this for. Then we have the source. Which information sources or samples should Copilot use? Here I'm telling it, focus on information from scholarity articles. Let's be honest here, marketing is a field where you have a ton of different sources out there on the internet telling you how to do marketing from influencers to marketing experts to each company wanting to sell you their product. There's so many, there's so much content out there for marketing. I want this to only focus on scholarity articles. So I'm telling Copilot the source. And finally, the expectation. Use as many concrete and real life examples as possible. So I'm sharing it. How should Copilot respond to best meet your expectations? Are there additional things that I need? Now again, I don't want you to spend 15 minutes every single time you want to interact with Copilot to craft the perfect prompt. That goes against the whole idea of being more productive with artificial intelligence. But you do not always need all four, but at the end of the day, the more details you give it, the better result you will get. So let's try this prompt in action. So the perfect prompt is generate 10 multiple choice practice questions. So my goal to prepare me for an intermediate level Office 365 exam at an interview. Focus on Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and Outlook only. So 
I'm telling it what is my context, and then I'm not giving it a source. I'm directly going to the expectation. Each question should have four potential answers, and only one of them should be correct. Only tell me the correct answer at the end of all the questions. Now, let's imagine that this is what I wanted, but it's not what I tell Copilot. So let me first just go and paste a very small version of it. So I'm telling it, let's close this, generate 10 multiple choice practice questions to prepare me for an intermediate level Office 365 exam at an interview. I didn't specify that I want Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, um, but it will give me something about Office 365. Let's see what it ends up doing here. You see, I have a question on OneDrive for Business, for example. Uh, I have a question on IMAP, uh, which is for Office 365 IT professionals. So you see, did it do what I wanted it to? Yes, it's generating 10 multiple choice practice questions to at an intermediate level. It did not give me what the correct answers are, uh, which is kind of funny here. I see some references, which I always recommend that you go take, uh, but it didn't actually tell me what the correct answers are. Now let's copy a bit of a bigger prompt, uh, a bigger part of the prompt. So let me take the same thing here. Let's start a new topic and let's say generate 10 multiple choice practice questions to prepare me for uh, the exam. Uh, each question should have four potential answers and only one of them should be correct. Now you see, I told it also to focus on Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and Outlook, but I didn't tell it to only tell me the correct answer at the end of all the questions. So what it's doing now, it's giving me the answer right away after each question. Now, of course, if I really wanted to not see the answer, it would be very difficult because now, even if I try to, I will always see the answer. So again, this is just an example on how the prompt that you do, and especially for me, the goal, context, and expectations are the most important part with Microsoft Copilot will give you a best result. The more details that you add, the better result that you will get. Something else I want to talk about is that with Copilot, we actually have three different conversation styles to be more creative, more balanced, and more precise. This will greatly affect the type of answer that we get from Copilot. So what do they mean? When should we use each one of them? First of all, for more creative. You should use this conversation style when you want Copilot to give you elaborate and imaginative responses, presenting information in a more extensive and creative manner. So if you're looking for creating a story, if you're looking at imagining ideas, creating something that is not real, creative is perfect for you. On the other end of the spectrum, we have more precise. More precise is perfect if you want concise and direct answers that deliver information in a straightforward manner. This is the one that I personally use the most because it's to the point, it's exactly what I want it to be, and it will not try to be creative in the answers. It will just give me the answer. And then we have the balanced option, which is a blend of both creative and precise conversation styles. It offers responses that really strike a balance between providing comprehensive information and maintaining brevity. So this is it for prompting. Next up, let's talk about tip number three, which is using Copilot in Edge has many benefits. Now, Copilot is available everywhere. It's available on the web. It's available on mobile devices such as Android, iOS, iPadOS. It's available directly in Windows with Windows Copilot. You can get all the information without ever leaving Windows. And it's also available directly in Microsoft's Edge browser. Now, 
The cool thing with Copilot in Edge, which is unique, is that it can use the context of the current page that you are on. So you don't need to give it everything in the prompt. You can go on a page, open up Copilot in Edge from the sidebar, and it has access to the full page. And this also works on PDF documents open in Edge. Furthermore, if you want to use Copilot to create content, you have the Compose bar in Edge. Uh, and this gives you additional properties, such as uh, changing the tone from professional to casual to funny, uh, changing the format. Are you writing an email, a LinkedIn post, a summary? Do you just want bullet points? You can change the length. Do you want a short, medium, or long answer from Copilot? But remember, at the end of the day, the sidebar in Edge doesn't actually give you any magic capabilities. It just modifies the prompt. You can always get the exact same results if you include this information in the prompt. So for example, saying that, hey, create me a blog post about PowerShell 7. Make it a professional tone. I want the format to be a LinkedIn post and I want it to be a medium length. So you can always include those as part of your prompt. Remember the expectation ingredient. You can include those in there, but with the Compose tab in the end sidebar, you have them directly here as options. So your prompt will be easier to write. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. Now, if I open up this blog post over here as an example, uh, you see it's quite a long blog post. It talks about quite a few things here. Uh, what I can do instead, I can open Copilot in the Edge sidebar here, and I can simply ask it to, let's go here and say, summarize this page for me. Now, it will take a few seconds for Copilot to do it. Let me zoom in a bit more to make sure that you see properly. You see it's able to access the content of the web page to give me a summary. What are the most important things that are talked about in this blog post? If you have a PDF document open, that also works. So you see, this is a lot shorter and I even have, for example, the references on where it got a certain part for. That is pretty awesome. Now, another way that I can use Copilot in Edge with is I can use Copilot in Edge here Let's here, let's start a new conversation. And here is a blog post that was done on Syskit about a video that I recently did with uh, Drew Madalong, one of my good friends here. And they also did a blog post around it. As a tech evangelist, I need to create some socials about the content I create, of course, to let everybody know about it. I can go here and ask Copilot to uh, create three social posts for Twitter to promote this blog post. There we go. And because I am on the page, Copilot has access to all of the content on the page. So it can see what the blog post is about. It can see who are the authors. It can even see, are there any social media accounts? For example, does the blog post mention the social media accounts of the authors? And there we go. Look how awesome it is here. You see it says, do you know what orphan workspaces are and how to tame them? Watch this video by Vlad Catrinescu and D. Madelongs. It was able to get our social profiles and then add them in the tweet. This can make your life a lot easier. And something else that is super, super cool. You can go on a YouTube video here. Let me start a new conversation again, which by the way, you should start new conversations if you change topic. This way Copilot doesn't keep some of the old stuff in memory when you change subject and it can influence a future result. So here I have a nice video that I did with Liberty Munson on my channel. And the video, as you can see, is 36 minutes long. I can simply ask Copilot to uh, summarize this video for me. And it will go take a look at the transcript, which is on the page. It will understand the transcript, and then it will create a summary for me. Now, of course, can I do that with Copilot in Chrome? Yes, but I would have to copy all the transcript 
and then give it inside the prompt and then ask it for a summary. With Copilot in Edge, I am able to really just be on the page and Copilot can use the context on the page, which is simply amazing. Uh, there we go here, we have a beautiful summary that I can read and you see it even uh, goes at around what time we talk about every single subject. So that is pretty awesome. Great, so that's it for tip number three. Now let's talk about tip number four. Keep it conversational. Copilot will not get things right on the first try. And it might be because Copilot doesn't get it right or your prompt is not exactly what you wanted. You realize after that you wanted something different. So whether it's images or text, keep asking Copilot to reiterate and give you alternatives. Copilot is free. It doesn't cost you anything to keep talking with it. So don't stop until you get the results you want. So if I go to Copilot here and I ask it, uh, create an image of a dog uh, behind a microphone as an example here. So let's close Copilot in the Edge sidebar here. And let's give Copilot a few seconds and it should be able to create a nice image for me. There we go, your image is generating and let's see what's actually creating. There we go, it created a dog behind a microphone, it's awesome. But you know what? That's not exactly what I wanted. Uh, I want the dog to be a golden retriever. Let's do that. So I'm keeping the conversation going with Copilot. So I'm just telling it, hey, you know what? I didn't give you the writing the first time. I actually wanted a golden retriever, not uh, another type of dog, which I think this is a beagle judging by the ears, but there we go. Now I have a golden retriever behind the microphone. That is awesome. Make the background be a fields of flowers. There we go. Let's try a final one. And as you can see, I am keeping the conversation going. So even if my first prompt was not perfect, right? It did not include the ingredients that I wanted, the context, the details that I maybe should have included. I'm still able to keep the conversation going. And now I have a happy golden retriever in a field of flowers. Isn't that awesome? So that was for number four. Now, probably the most important one, tip number five, always check for accuracy. Copilot can and will make mistakes. Copilot is not perfect because Copilot is trained on all the data on the internet. And for Copilot to be perfect, you would assume, you would assume that people are perfect and we're not perfect. There are so many things on the internet that are wrong. There are so many things on the internet that are outdated. For example, I asked Copilot, what are 10 things that Slack can do that Microsoft Teams cannot? And even from the first few things that it added, some of them were absolutely wrong. And is it Copilot's fault? Not really, because Copilot looks on the internet. And if 10 people say that Teams cannot do something and Slack can, it will look at that answer and it will say, hey, everybody says that Slack can do something that Teams cannot. So we will add that in the answer for Vlad. And uh, to finish it up in a funny way, can Copilot predict the future? I'm recording this video now 30 minutes before the Super Bowl has started and I asked Copilot who won the Super Bowl 58 and looks like either Copilot knows something we don't or Copilot uh, is just wrong because it hallucinates. So very, very important. Always check for accuracy. Uh, and finally, before we're done, this video ended up uh, being quite long. I really hope it was valuable, but if you want to get more training on how to be more productive with artificial intelligence, 
check out my training on Plural site. There's already a few hours of content out there. There will be a lot more hours of content there in the next few days uh, on full training on how to use Microsoft Copilot, Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365, Copilot in Power Platform, Copilot in Teams, all of the different Copilots. If you want to be more productive with AI, there is no better resource out there than Pluralsight. On this, thank you so much for listening to this video. I really hope that what I shared with you was valuable and you were able to learn something uh, from it. If you have enjoyed this video and want to stay up to date with the latest news on Copilot, tips and tricks, and everything Microsoft 365 and Power Platform, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much again for watching the video.